that they're filming a documentary and they just want to know if there's anybody who's against it so they could just let them know. So, est-ce que quelqu'un qui a un problème avec eux même qui a filmé le documentaire là? Non. Ah. Est-ce que tu les personnes est OK avec le filmé de le documentaire? Oui. Aïe bobo. Aïe bobo. Centrale d'Afrique. Nous sommes si loin. I want to tell you about voodoo. I don't know everything about it, but I'm going to show you what I've seen. I'm going to start here, on the north coast of Haiti in February 2007. Back then, Haiti was a poor nation, but not yet a devastated one. I knew little of the country and nothing about voodoo. I had come to film a Christian medical mission for a religious television series. I want to be able to use our skills as a surgery department to be able to introduce them to the teachings and the preaching of Jesus Christ. A few times a year, a team of American doctors and nurses come to this hospital along with a plane load of evangelical tourists. Their dream is to convince patients who believe in voodoo to embrace Christ. She didn't know who Jesus was, and she didn't understand about the things of God. And in that short period of time, we had to explain, we had to do a crash course on salvation. The crash course was received by this woman, who had just learned the surgeons couldn't save her baby's arm. I decided I needed to show an opposing viewpoint, so I asked my Christian fixer to introduce me to a voodoo priest. They let us in. I mean, they own this place. They are the witch doctors. Come away, live with Sejuanel Beauplan. Yeah, his name is Sejuanel Beauplan. I asked him what he thought of evangelical Christians and waited for anger and curses. C'est à conclure que nous acceptons missionnaires pour quelle raison? Parce que nous avons besoin d'avenir l'autre si nous ne sommes pas capables. His answer was not at all what I had expected, and for me, that was the beginning. I'm going to jump ahead to the first Sunday of 2010. In three years, a lot of things have changed for me. I've fallen in love with the country and its people, and with this person in particular. This is my husband, Jaffa. Jaffa is a voodoo isant, a voodoo believer. Today, we're in his place of worship. To believers, this cinder block building is part of Africa. It's called Daho, which is short for Dahomey, an old name for the West African country of Benin. These are our friends, Leonard and Marais. Leonard usually leads the service. He's a voodoo priest. Mireille is a mambo, a voodoo priestess. I sort of know what's going on, but to tell you more, I'm going to need some help. My name is Labelle Dees Jr. And uh, I'm the co-founder of Labelle Dees, the Real Voodoo Temple. I'm a fourth generation priestess. They will start the salutation with the four corners, meaning it will be south, west, east, and north. And then from that, they will move to the drum. That will be the second place. And then they will go to the Potomita, what they call the center of life. It's basically God that we're saluting, the God, the creator. And then we have the Holy Spirit. And then the third is always the spirits. Spirits are more likely to arrive if you offer some hospitality. Like people, they enjoy water, rum, and the warmth of a fire. Unlike people, the spirits are invisible most of the time. They have African names. In the era of slavery, these names were secret. Our master said that uh, we had to follow the Catholic saint. So we looked at each saint and said, OK, well, this saint represents Papa Ligba, this one represents Dantor, this saint represents Cousin, he represents so on. So whenever the master would come along, they see us praying, and they're like, OK, good, you're doing a good job. And yet we're praying to our spirits and our ancestors, asking for help and whatever it is that we need in our lives. Jaffa tells me that when a spirit enters your body, it's like you've been hit by lightning. 
Today, a powerful spirit enters Muray. This is not unusual for her, but it's a little strange to meet her this way. Muray is a shopkeeper and a single mother. Every weekday, she meets her son at school. The drive home takes an hour and a half. Why so far away? Because in Haiti, almost all schools are Christian schools, where Chris is likely to learn this about voodoo. In terms of how I, I feel about it, I feel that it is uh, spiritually evil. Bobby Boyer is an evangelical pastor in charge of several orphanages and schools. I feel like that it is not uh, consistent with what I, I believe that the, the Bible teaches. I think it has um, negative, very negative impacts on the, uh, the country. Mireille chose a private Catholic school that's a little more voodoo friendly. I asked her what she'd like to say to people like Pastor Bobby. C'est seul vaudouisant après docteur qui ca metté un monde sous pied si que le malade. Ça veut dire pas gien l'autre religion qui qui j'aime faire ça. I wonder what Chris thinks about having a mother who's a mambo. Bon oui, et moi fier parce que ma maman m'a guéri monde en dao. Today, Mireille has not been possessed by the spirit of healing. She's been possessed by Ugon, the god of war. He seems to be in a threatening mood. But appearances can be deceiving. The machete comes close, but never touches the skin. This woman was frightened, but only for a moment. Later, I was told this woman's actions were causing friction with her daughter. So Ogun first gave her a warning and then helped her heal the rift. Well, each time there's a ceremony, a voodoo ceremony, anybody who has any sorts of problem, they're like, you know what, I'm gonna go to that ceremony. It opens the door to help that person through that search of what it is that they're looking for in their life. Ugon uses his machete for another purpose as well. The machete is the weapon of the spirit, so when they're saluting the Vaudouisan or people who are there, they will use that weapon as to bless that person. So it's a blessing. Voodoo gives you strength, it gives you courage, and it gives you hope and the belief that once you have faith, everything you want is possible. This is the only time we've seen Mireille possessed by the god of war. Why did the god of war choose today to give these people strength? Looking back, I can't help thinking, it's because they're going to need it. On the afternoon of January 12th, I was in a cab in Toronto, Canada. I'd flown home alone because Jaffa was waiting for his visa. He called me on my cell. At first, I couldn't understand what he was saying. Tremblement de terre, tremblement de terre, earthquake. And then he said it wasn't over yet. And then the line went dead. This was my house. Five seconds after I got out, it crashed behind me. I got out with my guitar, my wallet, and my passport. In my neighborhood, many people died. Some I know, some I don't know. The earthquake was in the afternoon, so soon it was dark. No power, no traffic, no phones. Everyone slept on the street. When there were aftershocks, I would hear people cry out to God. In my wallet, I kept this. Here's only don't talk. I couldn't see her, but I hailed her anyway. The next day, I walked down my street. Until now, I don't know how many people the earthquake has affected. Still no power, no friends. These people are walking like I am to find out what happened. Who is alive? Who is enjoying? Who is dead? I'd been sitting by my phone for three days watching images like these on the news. I'd contacted everyone we know to find out if they'd heard anything about Jaffa. It was hell. When he got through, the first thing he said was, I love you. And I filmed for you. Hello? This is Jaffa two days later in a hotel restaurant. I'd flown down to meet him. 
His face looked 10 years older. We took a tap-tap ride to the edge of town, to the orphanage Jaffa and I support. When this building collapsed, six children lost their lives. Jaffa grew up in an orphanage, and whenever he can, he likes to give something back. No international aid has reached these children, and by the way, it never will. These children will live in a tent until we come up with a plan to rebuild. That night, we got a room in a hotel. By this time, we'd contacted everyone we know in Haiti. All the people involved in this film are okay, but other friends are gone. In my song, I pray to God, the master of water, heaven, and earth. There's no place for the spirits to live. The sacred tree has fallen. The sacred pool is dry. Oh my God, have mercy on us. Christy, something happened a long time ago in Haiti. They were under the heel of the French. Uh, you know, Napoleon the Third and whatever. And they got together and swore a pact to the devil. They said, we will serve you if you'll get us free from the French. Mm. It's a true story. And so the devil said, okay, it's a deal. In case you don't know, that's the American televangelist, Pat Robertson. And uh, they kicked the French out. You know, the Haitians revolted and got themselves free. But ever since, they have been cursed by, by one thing after the other. His words were heard by millions around the world, including in Haiti. According to him, the earthquake was not caused by tectonic plates colliding under land and sea. The root cause was something that happened 200 years ago. They got together and swore a pact to the devil. Well, first we were insulted, but at the same time, he don't know better. I think they don't understand the possession. We have spirits that comes very calmly, and we have spirits that are really angry. So I think when it comes to possession, sometimes they might think it's uh, the devil coming within us. But mainly, I think it's because before the independence, we had a ceremony with the black pig. LaBelle is talking about a ceremony that took place in 1791, where a pig was slaughtered and cooked and offered to the spirit as a Dentor. She is not the devil, but the spirit of abused women, a spirit who fights injustice. Some call her Maria. But Pat Robertson was right about one thing. There was a pact. It was a, basically a pact that the people made together to stand together and have unity and fight till death do them part. They think it's a pact that they made with the devil, when in reality it was a pact that they made together so we can fight together and die for each other. So that's the difference. Traditionally, voodoo has no pope and no hierarchy. But recently, priests and mambos decided they needed a spokesperson to counter the claims of people like Pat Robertson. They chose Max Beauvoir. Before Pat Robinson expressed himself on voodoo regarding that earthquake, I used to believe he was intelligent. But I think uh, on that day, he missed the opportunity to show something called compassion. More than a quarter of a million people disappeared below the rubble. Almost a million other people had to reside since that time below tents. Once upon a time, they had received some bag of rice coming from the international solidarity. But very quickly, we saw those bag of rice disappear. In fact, the Haitian people have been hurt, terribly hurt. Not only would the Vodou people have been hurt. In fact, it's the cathedral of Port-au-Prince which has crumbled. It is the a church of St. Trinity, uh, which has crumbled. One thing I think is important to say is that the world happened to know voodoo through the lenses of Hollywood. No matter how great Hollywood is, it has never thought about sending one sociologist or an anthropologist to come and study voodoo in Haiti and know what it is. Wade Davis is an anthropologist who's no stranger to Hollywood or to voodoo. He did research in Haiti in the 1980s and wrote of his experiences in the bestseller, The Serpent and the Rainbow. Where did we get this idea of voodoo being evil? 
I mean, it didn't really become evil in the public mind until the U.S. Marine Corps occupied Haiti in 1915, and they stayed for almost two decades. Most of them were from the South during the era of Jim Crow and segregation, and everybody above the rank of sergeant got a book contract. And the books had names like Cannibal Cousins, Black Baghdad, Voodoo Fire in Haiti, A Puritan in Voodoo Land, The White King of Lagunaf, The Magic Island. All of these books were filled with voodoo pins and needles and dolls that don't exist, um, zombies crawling out of the grave to attack people, and children bred for the cauldron. And they, they gave rise to the Hollywood movies of the 1940s, Night of the Living Dead, Zombies on Broadway, Zombies of the Stratus for the White Zombie Slave. And that's really where the idea of voodoo as something evil comes from. I have to hand it to Wade for having the history at his fingertips, but LaBelle sums it up much quicker. If we did make a pact with the devil, I think Haiti would have been more prosperous than it is. It's been 268 days since the earthquake. We spent the summer in Canada, and now we've returned. Just before we arrived, a new killer came to town. Today we know that the cholera epidemic was caused by UN soldiers who dumped human waste into a river. It would have been better if they had fessed up right away, for reasons I'll get to a little later. The situation is desperate, but what impresses me is how everyone seems to carry on in spite of everything. Our friends spent months under tents, but now they all have real roofs over their heads. They like to keep up appearances and stay positive. They don't like to talk about their financial situation, so I won't either. The earthquake nearly brought down Dahou. The Voodoo Wizan have yet to raise the money to make repairs, but they continue to gather here every Sunday. When we last saw Mireille, she was possessed by the god of war. Today, she's very much herself, leading the call and response that closes every voodoo service. Power, strength, love, respect, determination. Leonard finds strength in voodoo and in his family. His wife and sons were spared by the earthquake, but he lost several loved ones. C'est une cicatrice. Et comme les gens ils font une blague tout le temps, ils disent ah telle personne est fissurée, oui. comme les, les maisons là qui sont fissurées. Oui. Donc bon c'est c'est vrai que ça doit prendre du temps avant qu'il y ait une guérison intérieure. Every morning, he and his friend Aris get together to ask for guidance in this troubled time. The offerings symbolize elemental spirits of water, fire, earth, and air. Le mystique du vaudou, ça va directement dans la nature. Et on, on ne sort pas de la nature. On est là-dedans. Et c'est la nature qui nous parle, qui nous guide, qui nous oriente. Nous Aris sprays a perfume called Florida. It's not expensive, but the spirits like it. When someone is possessed, each spirit have their own face structure, because some are male, some are children, some are like babies, and some are females. They're all different. And when they hug you, it's just saying that you're a human being and you're one of the spirits. So eventually, when you pass on, you become one of us. Today, Leonard is possessed by a serene spirit. But for Aris, it's different. Some spirits, when they come, they're sensitive, and they're, there's a reason why they're crying. 
They're supposed to be there to protect their people and then to have this said that you're the one who's destroying that country, it's a big thing. I had an experience on the, the second day that I was here where we have a library. There's one book that had fallen. And I noticed that as I was coming out. It happened to be the Holy Bible. It happened to be face down and open. For me, I said, whoa. So I put my hand underneath it and I, I turned it over. It was Jeremiah chapter 19. And I think I need to be cautious when, when I say this, but in those verses, it says, the Lord Almighty says, I will send a disaster upon this place that will make the ears of those who hear it tingle. You have been worshiping other gods and shedding innocent blood in this place. I didn't send an earthquake. I didn't make one book fall. I didn't make it the Bible. I didn't make it open to that. My friend Nancy Alexander has heard this story more than once. There are people who say that it's God who punishes Haiti. Mais pour moi, le tremblement de terre a un sphère vraiment naturel. Et je ne crois pas que Dieu pourrait punir ses enfants d'une telle manière. The evil spirits that are here, where God's saying, you've got to leave. And it's almost like, in a, a spiritual sense, that there's um, tent pegs that have been put down by the, the evil spiritual forces, and then they had to go. After the earthquake, the urge to pull up tent pegs of evil was visited on many voodooisans. Juste à côté ici, il y a une dame qui dit, oh maman Marie, et puis il y avait des protestants qui passaient, qui l'agressaient. Vous voyez, on nous nomme maman Marie toujours. Qu'est-ce que vous faites avec ce maman Marie là? Yeah, um, I would say on an up note that directly after the earthquake, um, everybody seemingly was looking to God. And so spiritual interest was, was peaked. I have one story of a man who was a voodoo priest and the earthquake hit and the first word out of his mouth was God. And then uh, someone in my church told me, you know, a few weeks later he's back to, you know, his, his practices, his ways of voodoo. So I think a lot of folks have gone back to normal and that's sad to say. To me, the sad part is that life here isn't back to normal. Haitians don't normally have to line up for life's necessities. They don't normally have to worry about cholera. If you made a donation to Haiti Relief and you're wondering where your money went, Haitians want to know the same thing. At the orphanage I showed you before, Voodooisan helped raise the money to begin reconstruction. They feel shut out of the larger relief effort. I say to everyone, we take the word, but everyone will die in Leonard is determined to persuade aid agencies and Haitians at large to work with the voodoo community. The purpose of this press conference is to announce a mass march planned for a week today. The organizers hope thousands of voodooisans will march to remember those who died in the earthquake and the cholera epidemic. In the churches, we have more advantage that the faith of the world is close, and God is fashioned, and it's the apocalypse. We, on the other side, we see it differently. If there's an apocalypse, we've already traversed it. Si nous n'avons plus peur de la mort, bon, c'est le moment d'affronter la vie pour résoudre les problèmes d'Haïti. The March of Remembrance is scheduled to coincide with one of the most important days of the Voodoo calendar. Today is the Day of the Dead, the first day of the dead since the earthquake. As he does every year, Max has invited guests to his home to take part in Voodoo ceremonies. He is determined that life and voodoo will carry on.
This woman has been possessed by a spirit called Baron. Baron is the spirit of the cross, not so much the cross of Jesus as any cross one might find in a graveyard. When Baron takes control, he lies on the ground to become a grave. Baron likes to be wrapped in a funeral cloth and to have the pallor of the dead. Voodoo embrace him and ask for his blessing. The most uh, important moment will definitely be the one where the spirits of those ancestors will come to play with us, to dance with us, to talk to us, to tell us what we have done wrong in the past and what we should do better in the future. To understand, in reality, the day of the dead, one must have a vision of the yearly cycle. November 1st is when nature seems to have died and recuperates in order to attack life again in the spring. We believe in nature because we know that God is totally in nature as nature also is totally in God. Even for those who accept nature's cycle of death and rebirth, death still hurts. On the day of the earthquake, Leonard lost several loved ones not far from this spot. His brother-in-law, Gary, is foremost in his thoughts. He was a candidate magistrate for the mayor of Port-au-Prince. The movement called Rebati Port-au-Prince. We were members. We worked very hard to conquer the mayor of Port-au-Prince to be able to express our dreams. So the tremblement of the earth has hit very hard. This was the house of Leonard's sister, Nicole. When the earthquake struck, the house came down in seconds. Nicole survived, but her husband, her son, and his tutor were buried beneath tons of rubble. Leonard and his family dug for four days to recover the bodies. Leonard told me he didn't really feel the loss until six months after the earthquake, when he walked past this spot and the words of a song entered his mind. La cafetière n'est plus sur le feu. Il n'y a plus de café. Donc c'est ça que j'ai chanté. On pouvait prendre plus plus pas de café ensemble. On descendait la côte et puis c'est à ce moment-là que le deuil m'a m'a touché. Le mois de juillet, c'est là que je ressens que cette vie qui est partie de plus en plus aussi. Je passe plus par en arrière de l'autre rue que je passe pas ici. Mais en même temps aussi c'est c'est la vie. To honor the dead, Leonard will come here to the Port-au-Prince graveyard. On a normal day, it looks like this. But today, it looks like this. Many people come here to give offerings to Baron. This man honors him by dressing in black, the spirit's favorite color. If you honor Baron, he may speak to you later in your dreams. I've heard Haitian Christians say they don't like voodoo's use of alcohol. But is it communion wine alcohol? Voodoo is on choose many ways to honor the dead. This woman may look like she's simply smoking in front of a picnic lunch, but really, she's honoring the female counterpart to Baron, the spirit called Grand Brigitte. And if many seem in a party mood, there's a reason for that. Death is the next step for us, another passage that we go through. We're never, it's never over for us because we have another life to live. So when the people is passed on, it's a celebration. Perhaps the best way to honor the day is to arrive with ashes on your face, to honor the spirit called Gede. The Gede spirit is like a joker. It likes to play around and laugh around and make people laugh. And in the end, what it tells you is life is short. The only thing you have to do is live. If we can learn to laugh at death, Gede is pleased. And the sexual behavior that they do is part of it's human nature, because that's how we were all created. It's just telling you that this is part of life. Live your life to the fullest. Don't regret nothing. Do everything you got to do. The end is here.
and a lot of people get offended with the skulls and the bones and everything, but that's what we come into after we die. The body is nothing. It's the spirit we have within us that matters. In the end, we're not the one who created death. It's God, and we're only accepting it. That's it. Not all the people here would call themselves Fuduizong. Most of them go to church on Sunday, not to Adaho. But honestly, all Haitians are Vuduism, whether they acknowledge it or not. Because if you start beating the drum, you start saluting the spirit, they'll get possessed. It's not something they can never get rid of. It's in their blood, whether they admit it or not. This power is not lost on Haiti's Christian clergy. Outside the walls of the cemetery, pastors have urged their flocks to gather for a kind of counter-celebration. The faithful will praise Jesus continuously for as long as the voodoo celebration goes on. They can't drown out Getty's party, but they're gonna try. Leonard and Jaffa hope that many of the revelers will join the March of Remembrance. They're expecting thousands, but only a few dozen people show up. It's one thing to dance in the cemetery. It's another to march as a voodooisant on the public street, especially now as cholera deaths are rising. Evangelical pastors have been blaming voodoo. Within days of the march, 45 voodoo priests are reported murdered. This is the worst religious violence in generations. We have a lot of brothers and sisters who are still ignorant and people who have no education. And they don't really know how you contact the cholera. We don't hold the people who's actually doing the killing responsible. We hold the person who's saying to do this. Because right now we're in war in Haiti based on the religion, the Protestants and so on, and they, they don't want voodoo to exist. Thankfully, on this day, the marches encounter no opposition. When they reach the university campus, Leonard will offer flowers in memory of the earthquake victims without incident. As night falls on the Day of the Dead, we drive out into the countryside. We've been told that somewhere on this winding road, Voodooisan will gather for an evening service. You go to Haiti and you either have two reactions, fear of the strangeness or awe for the chance to live in a place where people really do move in and out of their spirit realm with ease and impunity, where the, the mystical fuses with the mundane, where, where, where life is so vital and alive, where people with nothing adorn their lives with their imaginations. And if you're open to the rhythms and the power of the Haitian culture, you realize it's probably the most vibrant, dynamic, cultural expression of the human imagination in all of the Americas. Jaffa and I spend December in Canada, but return for the first anniversary of the earthquake. Organizers have worked hard to make sure that the Day of Remembrance won't turn out like the march. At the entrance to a public square, Voodooisans have placed a wreath surmounted by a potomita. And just like the snake that sheds its skin, we leave our body behind. And this is why we see people as being eternal. Today, Voodooisans extend an invitation to all ancestor spirits to join with the living to remember the victims of the earthquake and the cholera epidemic. The priests prepare to offer a blood sacrifice. It's a chicken. I know some of you won't want to watch this next part, so while the butcher does his work, 
here's a Haitian chicken to play. There's one in almost every home, and they're what we would call free range. Today's chicken is now ready for the pot. It could have been a goat or a pig, but larger animals are more expensive, and I'm told the spirits like chicken just as much. This soup won't go to waste. The mambos will serve it to the voodooisan. Parce que pour résoudre le problème, peuple d'Haïti, nous besoin tout Haïtien mettre tête yo ensemble pour tout mettre travail à reconstruction pays yo ensemble. C'est catholique pour descendre pour deux ans ensemble et en même temps yo la gueule pour nous. Now, if you think you hear some dissenting voices in the background, you're right. I found out later they have a permit to gather in the park down the road, but they've decided to sing here instead. And after all that's happened, the accusations about cholera, the murder of the voodoo priests and mambos. How will the voodooies all fight back? Well, they sing. And that's enough to make this policeman nervous a fight might break out. He asks the voodooies on to stop singing and asks the Christians to move on. Inside, the voodoo is on carried on as if nothing happened. We say that everything that has life vibrates. And death is defined as the absence of the vibrations. To serve him is to vibrate to, the, to him. This is why we beat the drum and we dance. We have to wait for us to vibrate and vibrate for God. As the day winds down, I spot LaBelle in the crowd. She asks me if I'd like to visit her voodoo school. Tonight is an initiation ceremony for Ugans and Mambos. Most of these initiates are Haitian, but a few don't look like they have African ancestry. Of course, if you go all the way back to the Rift Valley, we all do. But you know what I mean. La Belle believes that voodoo, even spirit possession, is for everyone. Wade Davis isn't so sure. I had experiences in Haiti that, that, that were unusual for an outsider, uh, but I always held back on any claims to have having come into that metaphysical realm. The idea of someone who devotes themselves, who opens their heart, who opens their soul, who takes the initiations, who is completely open to the possibility of the spirit, absolutely. It's up to the spirits to decide when they come and when they go, and whom they will possess. This is the first time I've ever seen a spirit climb a tree. The trees are, how do I, that's where the spirits would lie. That's where they get their strength back. That's where they relax. So I would say more it's a home for the spirits, more than anything. I'm beginning to see there is a connection between certain trees and the Potomita. The center pole means the beginning of life and the end of life. We have God up here and we have our souls, our people that are down here. LaBelle's words remind me of something I filmed several years ago. I met a missionary named Pat, who told me that her pastor selected the site of their church based on the location of a voodoo tree. We were sitting on the porch one day and we heard all this noise coming up the street and they, where we had our ground to put the church, they started to cut across it and we realized they were going to do a voodoo ceremony under a tree at the back of where the church is now. And so we ran out and uh, farmed a line and wouldn't let them go through. And so they tried to get going through and we preached to them and we sang to them and we prayed to them. Yeah, we cut the tree down. No, we don't want the, we don't want the tree there. Yeah, we cut the tree down and we burned it.
I don't universally despise or, or criticize missionaries. I mean, but on the other hand, what is it that about these evangelical faiths that drive people to leave their homes to try to persuade people of utterly different cultures that they have the monopoly on the route to God? The person who gets possessed gets nothing out of it because after they finish, they get weak and drained and tired and sometimes thirsty, depends what kind of spirit. So they don't get no benefit in it. It's for the people who are there. My favorite thing about voodoo is to find myself in it ever since I was a little girl. Um, to find my mom serving the spirits, and the only thing she's been doing is helping people. She has never killed not even a bird, and yet I hear all the time that we kill people, and it's against our religion, it's against our belief, because if we would kill somebody, then we're no longer spiritualist, we're no longer pure, because we wouldn't be able to heal people anymore. If we can respect the Italians as being the Pope and the Catholic and the so on, why can't this black country have its own religion? We're not zombies, we don't worship the devil, we worship God, the same God everybody's worshiping, and I think everybody deserves to give it a, a chance. <laughs> If LaBelle could speak directly to Haitian Christians, what would she say? What I would say to them is that you have the right to choose what you want to be. But at the same time, you just owe it to yourself to know who your ancestors are, who your great-grandfather were and great-grandmother. You could be a protestant and still know your background and still know who you are and what you are, where you came from. That doesn't make you a bad person just because you know your roots. But even Christians who know their roots, like my friend Nancy, still have one big problem with voodoo. C'est le seul problème que j'ai avec les voodooisants, avec quel que soit le secte qui ne voit pas qui est que Dieu était venu sur terre et et il était mort pour nos péchés. Nancy is right about that, and she is. We know this statue as the Sacred Heart. What it represents is Jesus Christ that was in pain. But for Christians, Jesus isn't a spirit. He's the Savior. Max would agree that voodoo doesn't have anyone like that. Some people wanted to see syncretism, meaning an incorporation of a Christian faith or cults or part of the cult into voodoo. Personally, I've never seen it. I don't believe it. And yet, every voodoo isan will tell you a story about a man named Mackendall. What was the life of the slave? It was so horrible that I usually prefer to escape it in my speech. I don't think we need to go into those details. Those are the bad moments for humanity. One day, Mackendall escaped into the forest. Suddenly, he was a free man. But he was alone, and he longed to free everyone. He returned to the plantation to kill the overseers. But he was captured, beaten, tied between two trees, and burned alive. The smoke carried his spirit up to heaven. A few days later, he returned. He called the people with his drum. It's the voice of ancestors. We believe in it and it is our invitation cards to unity, because the whole thing is based upon unity. Marchons unis, let's work together. Well, elbow to elbow, we shall make it. With his united people, Mackendale shared secrets from the spirit realm. Their bodies were anointed so bullets could not harm them. Their arrows were dipped in liquid that would make them go through armor, and all would fight until they were free. Many people believe that we have only fought for freedom and liberty. In reality, we fought for social justice. We fought for the right of everyone to be himself, to be able to be capable to express himself as he is, for, for everyone to have his own free choice uh, in the world, choice of religions, for choice of color of skins, choice of ideology, choice of whatever he wants. For Christians, Jesus returned to wash away our sins. For Voodoo Isan, 
Mac and Del return to help us break our chains. When Voodoo Weezah remember their ancestors, they're looking for inspiration. In Daho, sometimes the god of war becomes the cleaner, a spirit who clears the path to the future. The cleaner can sweep away obstacles and push through walls. But what are the wall between Christians and Voodoo Weezah? There is a base level at which they're diametrically opposed. They want to come together with another group, the Christian community, and try and help that community. It's, it's like undermining uh, what, you're, what, you're trying to to, what you're trying to do. There would have to be, to me, a clear change of heart and mind, which then would make it, my understanding, not, not voodoo. <laughs> it may seem like uniting voodooism and Christians is impossible. But for voodooism, there is no limit to the spirit's power. They believe it because of their ancestors' impossible victory and because they experience impossible things almost every day. Dieu est un mystère, chacun de nous aussi est un mystère. Parce que d'un moment à l'autre, je peux me surprendre, toi aussi tu peux te surprendre. Vous voyez, parce que vous faites des choses extraordinaires. I think that's why Max keeps talking. Often his words fall on deaf ears, but not always. We intend to oppose the, the growing of that cholera disease which is taking place in our country. Very recently, we have been able to pull our strength together, Catholic, Protestants, Episcopalians, and Vodou people. I think we can succeed it. And after we have succeeded that one, there'll be many more battles to win again, and we shall win them all. So thank you very much. Java has found a way to work with Christians too, or at least one Christian. His brother designed these hurricane and earthquake-proof homes. Mon frère, il est chrétien, mais moi, je suis vaudouisant. Mais il n'y a pas un problème. Vaudouisant ou chrétien, on travaille ensemble. And the orphanage has been rebuilt through the efforts of people of both faiths. Some Christians, like worship leader Lionel Pierce, see it this way. Even though we have some people, you know, they believe in vaudou, um, I think we can work together, Vodou and Christian. Um, because, because we are Christian, we know God, we can influence those who don't know God. I think um, it's a beautiful country, as you can say, and we will change that country with love. I believe it. What? <laughs> bon, mon fils m'a dit, c'est le temps de partir. Je me bats, je me bats, je me bats, je me bats pour que les gens respectent ce que c'est le vaudou. Le vaudou, c'est pas le diable. Le vaudou, c'est la spiritualité. Our final shoot is done. Tomorrow, Jaffa and I will fly back to Canada. We've managed to reach the end without seeing the devil once. In front of our hotel, there's a mob scene. We hear that someone from Haiti's past has returned after 25 years of exile. I'm talking about the notorious baby doc. And here he is, in our hotel restaurant, not 10 feet away. That's his girlfriend. That's his longtime advisor. Baby doc is surrounded by friends. They are among the richest people in Haiti. And yes, it looks like his friend is giving him a traditional voodoo hug. But Baby Doc is very Catholic. When he was in power, he proved his Christian seal to the Pope by ordering the extermination of all of Haiti's black pigs. This symbolic act impoverished Haiti's poorest rural citizens. The next day, hundreds watch as he heads off to court. Rumors say he'll get a slap on the wrist and then be allowed to run for president. Hard to know what's true. Some yell insults, but most are here to support him. Why would anyone want to bring back the Duvalier regime? I'm sure people in Haiti at some level look back on those baby doc years with almost nostalgia because, because there was total order. Uh, and clearly, if you opposed the regime, I'm sure you had consequences that were not nice. Back then, you probably weren't living in a tent. You probably had a job and food. It's tempting to think that Haiti can't get any worse, but I think it could. 
Or it could go another way. On nous parle du paradis perdu. Le paradis n'est jamais perdu. C'est pas une question de lieu. C'est comment vous allez cultiver votre fort intérieur pour pouvoir survivre sous cette terre. Aïe Bobo. Ce qui est nouveau peut-être, c'est notre façon de regarder les choses, notre façon de voir les choses dans le monde. Aïe Bobo. Aïe Bobo. I wanted to tell you about voodoo. I don't know everything about it, but I've shown you what I've seen. I've shown this film to my friends in Haiti. They approve this message. Oh, and I don't know why, but I have to add this one last thing. Hello. Hello. Aïe Bobo.